You know, there should have been a book that told you what to do when they did this or they thought that, but there wasn't. My kids raised me, that's honestly the truth. In general, all of my kids are very hard workers. And they're also very honest. And they're pretty soft-hearted. Uh, Lara, my oldest, married young. Uh, but since that time, she's got a bachelor's degree and then three degrees in nursing. She's been a nurse for ever. A really good nurse. Uh, she's tenacious. She has a really funny sense of humor. I never quite know what's gonna come. And we have a great time together. We laugh. Well, we're ridiculous together sometimes. Anne is my second daughter, uh, hardworking. We've been estranged for about five years because of a family event. And Anne, if you ever listen to this, you need to know that I love you more than anything. And forgiveness and unconditional love is the most important thing in a family. And then I have Cindy. Cynthia is her name. When I say Cynthia, she thinks she's in trouble. Never stops, wants to be outside, hardworking, tenacious, almost OCD about some things. Things just have to be a certain way. When she was young and we had the sheep in the, on the ranch, they each had a list of chores they had to do. So Cindy would do hers really fast and then run out the door so I couldn't catch her to give her something else to do. And she just kind of lived that way. She did the same, her chores were always done. There was no problem. She just wasn't gonna hang around until I gave her something else to do. I've enjoyed spending time with her. She's uh, quite, a, quite a hunter. She graduated from Utah State and community health. She's been blessed that she really hasn't had to work. Things have worked out well for them. My next daughter is Amy, and she also turned out to be a nurse, good nurse. She worked at the emergency room at Logan Regional Hospital through the pandemic. And that was hard for her. She got COVID, a serious case of COVID, which she survived. But, you know, you talk about the nurses who had a really hard time with all the death and everything. Her love for people just really took a beating. She wears in her emotions on her sleeve. She's very caring. She's got a sense of humor, a little bit of a tease. She's a good mom. She's the one who took up cake decorating. And she makes cakes and She'd really love to run a bakery. I know she would. Jacqueline is the next one. Um, Jacqueline and I spent a lot of time together because she was the last girl and she was home with the two boys while everybody else had married and moved on. And we've become not only mom and daughter, but really good friends. She uh, graduated from the University of Utah with a degree in counting. Everybody else went to Utah State, but she went to the University of Utah. She looked at what she was doing a little differently. So when I'm watching blue, she's watching red. She is now married to a rancher over in Bolad. She was a city girl. And I can't believe she's on that ranch, baiting hay, cutting things, raising horses. But she's having a great time. Jacob, my first son, he went to the oil field to work. And he's still there. He started out climbing those big oil rigs and putting that pipe down that hole. And I used to just have a fit because that's a very dangerous job. He works for a company where he's a specialist in making sure that the pressure is correct 
on the plants that push the natural grass around this country. So he can be in Ohio, Iowa, he can be in New Mexico, he can be on the East Coast. And after he got his last certification, he called me, he said, well, now you have seven educated children. Jared, my last one, uh, he went to Utah State. He's got a couple of bachelor's degree. This has always been interesting to me. He he's always wanted to teach school, always. And being a teacher, I know that it's not always fun. And I tried to talk him out of it. But he did get a job, and right when the pandemic started, and school was not school anymore. And he was there for three years, a renewal contract. He decided it just wasn't for him. So he started up his own construction company called Davis Dozer. And he's doing really well at it. He puts in watering systems on BLM land for ranchers with pumps that are run by sunlight. He's now decided to branch out and start to dig wells that you would have around a house for people who want to live in the country. And he's as happy as can be. My kids were full of it. They were just self-confident and fun and they had 700 acres to run in and they moved pipe and they had three wheelers to ride and then they had motorcycles to ride and they all learned how to drive trucks out in the field and they all learned how to drive tractors and they all had the wonderful privilege of moving pipe. The ones that they hated to move and I did too was when you were moving the wheel lines through grain. It was step, move, pull that boot out, and it sucked, <laughs> move to the next one. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> they did too. The kids used to take the three-wheeler down to move the, the pipes. And uh, I am surprised they're still alive. You know, every one of them has a heavy foot. They would go as fast as they could. And this is not a four-wheeler. This was the three-wheelers that came out before the four-wheelers came out and before they got their motorcycles. And they cut those corners as hard as they could, just giggling the whole way, just having the time of their life. We lived on Highway 30, and we had put a chain link fence around our house because my kids wouldn't stay in the yard and the highway was there and it had these big wheeler trucks that go down it you know and one day when my first my first son's name is Jacob he was about three and a half one of my children Anne Marie looked out and he was standing in the middle of the highway and that girl cleared that yard and that chain link fence. Uh, if she hadn't, he probably would have become in, injured, but it was just, you know, one of those things that just like, wow, we've been blessed again. You know, my kids were hard workers. Uh, they didn't really complain and make it tough because they really didn't have a choice. They worked right alongside me. When their dad was home, they worked right alongside him about this time. Uh, he went to work in the oil field toward the end of it, and so uh, the kids and I ran the farm. And I don't have any bad memories about working on that farm and teaching my kids to work. Uh, they wanted a trampoline, and we had some bum, bum lambs, which means their mother wouldn't take them. I said, okay, raise the lambs and buy your trampoline. And so they'd fix those little bottles, you see, you know, with a nipple on them. And they did. And there was, they earned enough money that year to buy a trampoline and their own bicycles. 
And it was a lesson kind of in, if you put the work in, there's a reward at the end. A simple thing such as feeding milk to bum lambs. You know, it turned into a trampoline, it turned into a work ethic, it turned into bicycles, it turned into my kids going to work wherever they could. I am most proud of my kids because they are good people. There have been things in their life that have been very upsetting and hard for them, but they just keep at it. Uh, actually, Jacqueline tells me that they call me the oak. <laughs> I looked at her and she says, Mom, you don't change, you don't deviate, you just work through it. And that's just what you do. I want my kids to know that I love them because I do. I love them when they're good, I love them when they're bad. I love them when they're funny. I love them when they're having a temper fit. I just have never not loved them. And I feel that love back. It's just something that I know that is there. I know that my children have my back. And that if I need something, they will be here immediately. And that's, when you get my age, that's a good thing to be able to feel. Uh, closing up, I would like to tell my kids that I love them, I love their children, I love my great-grandchildren, I love and have been very blessed by family. My wish for them is that they will stay strong, don't stop, don't give up, connect with the people who love you because they'll be there to help you through. Connect with the Savior is the most important re relationship you will ever have. Be kind and set boundaries where people know you expect kindness. And the boundary that says, I expect kindness is really helpful. When it comes to forgiveness, there's been lots of discussions with my children about forgiveness. But this is what I say, beside it being a principle of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You forgive for yourself. It's you that changes because of the forgiveness. Actually, part of my prayers at night is that they will each become a disciple of Christ. And that one principle will make their life so much better as they struggle. And we're all going to struggle. And some of them are struggling now. And as my mother said on the end of her paper, when we got through her instructions, love each other, Take care of each other and don't fight. <laughs>